My name is Alex George and I'm an Ansible specialist and I'm going to be walking through some development environment updates, including some new development tools and new capabilities that recently rolled out. So what new Ansible development capabilities have rolled out? If you're familiar with Ansible Lightspeed and the AI generation tool for Ansible content, it's now available on more platforms. So it used to be limited to VS code, the actual version running on a laptop. Now we can really use it anywhere that VS Code or the upstream VS Code variant exists. So this means I can use it in an on-prem OpenShift dev spaces. I can use it in Code Server. All I have to do is also install the Red Hat authentication extension, and I can use this anywhere that I can deploy any sort of VS Code variant. There's also a new project called Ansible DevTools. This is a Python package that I can install that includes a whole number of different Ansible projects. So this ensures that I Really, with a single install, I can have everything I need to both run Ansible, build execution environments, ensure that testing is part of my process, all from a single environment. So this can be a very easy way to get started with Ansible development. And I've now installed it for me in all of my different development environments, including my Dev Spaces container that I've created. If you are looking into OpenShift Dev Spaces or Eclipse J, and you want to ease that onboarding process, there's some new capabilities to essentially add a contribute button to a readme with a direct link to dev spaces, as well as that exact project. So I can tie this to a specific branch of our project. If I know I always want personnel to operate off the development branch, I can tie that directly into my process. I can also tie into my pull request process to add a web IDE link so I can review that particular code inside OpenShift dev spaces, and I can do any sort of additional testing that I want within that project. Speaking of testing, I can run Ansible Molecule within OpenShift using UBIs as part of my development process. And I'll show that in a second to show how I can leverage OpenShift and the ability to spin up containers on demand to do some of that development testing for me. So first, I'm going to dive a little bit more into Ansible Creator and what the purpose of that is. So Ansible Creator, one of the projects of that Ansible DevTools, is to provide that scaffolding for different pieces. Right now, it's to do collections and it's also to do just generic projects. So if I wanna do a collection, especially the very detailed aspects of creating a collection, I can use Ansible Creator init, the collection name, and the path that I wanna place it into. This will create a very, very detailed structure. I know this might be a little bit difficult to read, but as you can see, this has every single aspect of what might be built into a collection. Everything from the documentation to extensions to include molecule, send to galaxy.yaml, the change log, all the plugins, so if you're creating your own custom actions or custom inventories or custom modules, all of that's part of this, as well as roles, tests, playbooks, the entire process of what might exist for an Ansible collection. So it's a great place to start, and then it can easily remove specific folders or paths that don't exist because I'm not creating them as part of my collection. I would really only focus on this if you are creating your own collection. If you are just trying to do a project that I'm going to upload into Git or some sort of Git variant, that's where I'd use the initializing Ansible project for Ansible Creator. So in this case, again, it will do a project. It will still create a collection for you, but a very base collection. This is generally how we're starting to shift towards, instead of just creating roles, create a collection with roles inside it, which Ansible Creator will do in this case. So as you can see from this structure, that collection is much simpler. We're just creating Ansible collection with, in this case, one collection with just a role built into it. And I can use this to then build off of for additional roles uh, as part of that collection, but it also adds in a dev file to work well with OpenShift dev spaces, any sort of GitHub actions, also place in inventory and some example playbooks. So if you have users that are not necessarily familiar with how to get started with Ansible, this could be a great way to build out a directory structure and once again, delete the files or situations that don't necessarily apply for your Ansible development. So this is a great way if you're not familiar with what that directory structure is, don't want to dig through the documentation, I could just use this to deploy both a collection structure or a just a generic project structure to start building for my Ansible development. So I'm going to dive into a demonstration to show these different capabilities, both Ansible Creator, Ansible Lightspeed, as well as the OpenShift Dev Spaces, README, and pull request capabilities. So jumping into the demonstration, I'm first going to start with Ansible Creator. So as I talked about, you can create an Ansible project that will have the full scaffolding for me, or I can also specifically just create an Ansible collection, which will have a lot more detail if I'm trying to build my own custom collection. So first, I'm going to create a new project. In this case, I'm going to create one with a collection called shadowman.gcp, and I'm going to initialize it into my current working directory. So as you can see, I don't have a GCP project created. 
So I can hit enter and you'll already see that pop in. And I'm also going to initialize a collection in addition to that. So while it has that shadowman.gcp, I'm also going to create a shadowman.dns collection inside that exact same project. This one will have significantly more capabilities available to it. So I'll show what that looks like as well. So both those have been created. So I'm going to click into this Ansible GCP project. And as you can see, it's got all kinds of capabilities for dev containers for Podman and, and Docker. It's got a GitHub folder so I can set up workflows or Ansible code bot out of the box. It also has some VS Code extensions. So if I want to use you know, that Red Hat Ansible extension, that's built in. So this will work well in OpenShift dev spaces. It's got a pre-built inventory with host vars and group vars. So it already has these pre-built in for you. Obviously, you would change this based on your actual inventory as a base Ansible navigator, base Ansible config, a dev file.yaml to use the base Ansible tooling. And then I can also dive into some playbook examples. So especially if you've never done anything with Ansible before, this can be extremely helpful as you start looking into some basic ideas of how do I set up hosts, how do I set up become, the tasks, tasks examples, all of that's built in, whether it's Linux, whether it's networking, or a general site.yaml with, are readme built in as well. It's got this full process built in, and as you can see, it even throws in a readme with this full process. So if you don't need all these different files and folders, I can certainly delete them to make it structured to exactly what I want, but this streamlines the process of building out this scaffolding for any new projects and repositories that need to be created. So jumping into the collections themselves, as you can see, I've got two under my Shadowman uh, Ansible collections. I've got the GCP one that was created with that first process, which just creates one run role with just a basic set of tasks. And then I also created that DNS uh, collection, which has significantly more built into it because this is designed for designing custom collections. So this has the addition of extensions built in so I can add in Ansible Molecule, I can add in event-driven Ansible source plugins, I can make sure I set up the meta and the plugins and all that. So this is really if I want to publish a collection, whether that's internally or that's something that I want to push to Ansible Galaxy or Automation Hub, this is a great place to get started to develop all of the general pieces that need to be involved in a collection. Once again, if I don't need to have all the different plugins, I can delete those and just get down to the shell of maybe I'm just trying to create roles as part of my process. So I can leverage that as I go through this to really streamline to be exactly what I expect for my Ansible collection piece. If you're not familiar with using the command line, there's also a get started within the Ansible extension itself. This right now is limited to just initializing an Ansible collection. These two don't work yet. But if I click this, it then brings up a nice interface where I can put in that namespace, the collection, the path I want to initialize it to, and some additional options around verbosity so I can see exactly what gets created. So again, this is a very quick and easy way to get started with the Ansible tooling so I can have that scaffolding pre-built out for me. So next, let's jump into some of the dev spaces pieces. So I have OpenShift dev spaces up and running. I'm already logged in as myself, so I'll skip that step for the demonstration. But as you can see, I have no workspaces up and running. So I've got a GitHub project here already created called Ansible config. If I scroll down in my readme, I've already created a contribute button that points directly to my OpenShift dev spaces. So I'm not using Red Hat's publicly hosted one. I'm using the dev spaces installed in my environment and it's directly pointing to this repository. I could also have it point to different branches of my repository. I just have to change the URL in that contribute button. So if I want to ensure that anytime someone opens this up, it pulls my development branch or feature branch, I could have that built into this process. So I'm just going to click this button and directly through my exact same tab in my browser, it's going to find the dev file that I previously put in there, which obviously goes back to setting up dev spaces for Ansible, but this will pull in my OpenShift uh, dev spaces EE that I've got set up. So I'll have Ansible Lint and all those Ansible dev tools that I talked about before will be built into this process. So for light speed to work, I did specifically add an extra piece into my process. So I did have to make sure for my VS code, I added an extra extension in there, in this case called VS code Red Hat account. That's the Red Hat authentication extension. That's its actual name if you want to write it out. But this will install, in my case, I see the Ansible extension, the ML extension, which is dependency, and then the VS Code Red Hat account extension. And that's what will allow me to, whether it's code server or an on-prem dev spaces, this will allow me to collect Ansible Lightspeed to my on-prem environment. So this gets rid of that limitation of only being able to use this for a remote SSH or VS Code that's running on my laptop. So I can see in here, it's got the idea to be able to log in with Red Hat. 
So I'm going to click this. You'll notice this is a different link than what you usually see. It usually goes to c.ai and all of that. This is actually going directly to sso.redhat.com. So I'm going to open this. I have previously logged in as my user, so it's not going to prompt me to log in again, but it's going to ask me to grant access to my Red Hat account, which I'm going to click grant access. And that's it. So the device login is successful. And I can jump in here and I can now see that Ansible Lightspeed is now licensed. So to prove that it actually works, I can just write a very simple task of install Nginx, hit enter, and I can already see Ansible Lightspeed running in the bottom and it will have a prompt available for me. So in this case, I can hit tab and it will accept that suggestion. There is a part of the Ansible extension where I can not include this comment. So I can just uncheck that box and this comment will be removed so I don't get that additional comment of content suggestions provided by Ansible. But this now extends out that Lightspeed capability so it doesn't matter where I'm running my VS Code environment, it's all available to me. Next thing I wanna run through is specifically using Ansible Molecule. So first, because it will take a little bit, I'm going to start the Ansible Molecule process. So this is built into my collections my Ansible collection and inside my actual folder. So I've created a shadow man config repo and in the extensions is where the actual molecule piece is set up. So I'm just gonna run molecule test and I'll walk through exactly what this is doing in the background. But as you can see right now, I just have my workspace in my OpenShift Dev Spaces project, but this will add in all the UBIs that I've defined inside my project. So again, I'll walk through what that looks like. But in here, in my actual collection itself, I can see that I've got this extension set up for Molecule, my default, and I can see that I've got all of these different steps set up. So in my Molecule.yaml, this is essentially where I've defined the different UBIs that I want to spin up. So I'm going to test this on a rel 7, rel 8, and rel 9 base image, which is now spun up. So this didn't exist before, was automatically spun up, and will be automatically destroyed at the end of this process. What I'm actually using for this is for my create step, I am using Ansible and the OpenShift collection to create those instances. I'm pulling the environment information to spin this up in the environment. So I'm not adding in additional credentials. None of these credentials live in my GitHub project or anything like that. And then I'm going through the process after creation to do the testing of my role. So this role is part of my base Ansible collection. So I don't have to do anything additional for that. I can add in verify steps. So in my case, my verify step is as simple as verifying that patching was done and that it didn't try to install any additional packages. Be aware that with UBIs trying to do reboots won't work well because it's not going to maintain state. That's essentially the purpose of containers. But this does allow you to do some of your testing inside OpenShift without ever needing to extend to some other separate container platform, VMware, Azure, AWS. I can do this entire process within my OpenShift environment. So there are a whole bunch of things that I can do as far as how this goes. I can build out deployment templates. I can add in multiple, converge, create, destroy. There are other steps that exist as well, but this entire process is fully contained within my environment. So I don't need to worry about connecting to different systems. So this works very well for testing all of my Red Hat Enterprise Linux playbooks because I can do this all within my environment. And at the end of the day, it's going to start destroying those containers. So I already destroyed the RHEL 7 container it will destroy the rel eight and then destroy the rel nine. So this is a fully self-contained process that does this initialization and destruction. So I've seen that I can actually get into a dev space directly through a readme file. I can have a readme file per repository if I want. I can also tie this into a pull request. So maybe for visualization, I wanna see the exact state of my repository as part of that pull request. I don't like to look in GitHub to look into the pull request that way. I can also do that through a, in this case, a GitHub action that exists called try and web IDE, web IDE. So I can see exactly how that works. So once this is done, I'm going to destroy this uh, dev space because I don't need this running as I try to spin up a second one. But really this will give me that capability to extend past really having to do all of this in a GitHub interface. And this also means if I built in Ansible molecule testing like this, my end user who's reviewing this pull request could run this exact same test to verify output. So now that this is completed, I've verified everything works successfully. I'm going to delete this dev space because I don't need it. And I'm gonna jump into a second repository which has a pull request already created. So inside this, I have an Ansible ServiceNow repository with one pull request. I'm going to jump into this. And yes, I could look through the files, change and see all those pieces, but 
I'm going to leverage this GitHub action that exists that allows me to review and test in a web IDE. Conveniently enough, this once again is pointing to my OpenShift dev spaces. But if you look at the URL on the bottom, it's going directly to the branch that this is pulled from automatically. So I'm not checking the main branch. I'm not testing a dev branch. This is directly tied to the feature branch or whatever branch that was created and that the pull request was originated from. So I'm going to get that exact version of this project at that time without having to worry about manually typing that in, keeping track of that. The GitHub action takes care of that automatically. And I'll show what that file looks like in my repository once this spins up. So this, again, will give me exactly that state of the project at exactly that same time, have all of the same capability that existed before. So I'm going to be installing Ansible Navigator. I'm going to be installing the Red Hat authentication extension. I could leverage Ansible Lightspeed. I can leverage Ansible Lint. So I can do all of that through an IDE. And all I actually do was in my GitHub folder, I created a specific workflow called Web IDE. This is using a GitHub action called Try in Web IDE. And I'm just using the current main branch. This is a secret that's automatically populated as part of um, just trying to pull from GitHub. And then I added in the add comment, which is how it showed up in the comment section of the pull request. I added in my specific dev spaces instance, and I wanted the comment badge to look specific. So I wanted it to look, say, open shift dev spaces and have a red color. That's really all this comment badge section is doing. So it looks exactly like I wanted to use. And this is pulling from image.shields.io. And if I click that, you actually see that this is the exact image that existed um, in that pull request. So this is really designed to streamline some of your development processes with the, all the Ansible dev tools and Ansible Lightspeed, as well as your review process using that IDE capability directly from a pull request. So especially if you're using Ansible to do your development and testing, I can leverage that capability of Ansible Molecule as well as to doing the testing directly in here. So I can see is linting working successfully for these different pieces. Well, I can run Ansible Lint in here without needing to tie it into a GitHub action, though you can also use Ansible Lint within your GitHub workflows. So a lot of different capability depending on what your style and need is for your different development processes. So whether you're just getting started with Ansible development or you've been doing Ansible development for a while, this hopefully gives you a few additional options of tools that you can use or different processes that you can use and also this should hopefully help you onboard new users into the Ansible development process. I've absolutely used code server and dev spaces significantly and have a lot of conversations about that. If you already have a Kubernetes environment, spinning up dev spaces for end users can be a very quick process. Since I'm the one who's already built out that dev file.yaml, I'm the one who's already built out that extensions file. So all I have to do is open it up in the browser and they're off and running. It's already got all the Ansible syntax check and linting built in it really can streamline some of your processes as you try to get people onboarded who may not have any experience with Ansible, let alone an IDE. So in the description down below, I'm going to include the two examples from my repository that have that readme with the contribute button. Obviously, you can modify that to point to your dev spaces and to your repositories. Same thing with that GitHub action for the try and web IDE. You can modify that to point to your particular dev spaces and obviously have whatever icon that you want for both of them. And then I'm also going to link the documentation for Ansible DevTools and all the different pieces that are part of that, as well as the specific documentation for Ansible Creator, so you can see how you can get started with some of that scaffolding capability, which I think will be great as you're looking to getting started a little bit more with Ansible and trying to build out some best practices scaffolding structure for your different development environments. Thank you for taking the time out to learn a little bit more about Ansible development tools and development environments. This hopefully gives you a better place to get started or continue to grow on your Ansible journey. Thank you. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.